Welcome to an encounter with the Spirit, Word, and Prayer through the prolific apostolic and teaching ministry of Apostle Femi Lazarus, lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church Global. It is his vision to raise God's end time on. God has not called you to prove you are the best. He has not. As a leader, you are a broker of gift and talent. So, brace up for an experience. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. What an awesome time with Minister Moses Accord this morning. Let's give him a big hand. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lord. Now, quickly, I'd like us to turn our Bibles. I'm starting a new series this morning. Yeah, you don't seem excited. You go. I think there's something about Abuja. You guys don't know how to show love. <laughs> Communicate it. Be excited. See, I'm starting a new series. Yeah. All right. This came by an, as an instruction. I mean, I was going somewhere else, but God said, I want you to deal with this in this season. All right. And um, I believe much more he has his reasons why, why, why he said that. Amen. And as I studied for that, I, I, I saw. Let's turn our Bibles quickly. Um, I'm going to start from the book of um, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. I start reading from... If I dare say amen. Let me start from verse 3. Now Paul speaking to the Corinthians says... I want us to read this together. All right, There's something we need to do together. One, two, three, go. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk. Now, hold on. Let's, let's get the context. This means that there's a warfare going on. Is that simple enough? There's a warfare. And this has nothing to do with whether you are interested in fighting or not. As long as you are breathing, it's already too late. There's a warfare going on. And the point of reference of that warfare is in the spirit. So what this means is that the one who is not walking in the spirit is already a casualty. You have no choice than to be spiritual because life in itself is spiritual. Life is. This is not some voodoo or African magic. This is the nature of life. There is a back end. And much more, I need us to pray. You know, if I can drag you to pray eight hours per day, I will. Because I need us to pray. There is a back end. Oh, I'm so kind. I'm nice to everyone. And they'll be nice towards me. Sorry. There is a force that controls life. And that force is not kind. That's the truth. You know, when God started teaching me about spiritual warfare, thank God I started learning this quite early. Because this subject is warfare. When you hear arrow, they don't use arrow at the dining table. Talk to me now. You go with somebody to eat and say, I eat with arrows and swords. You say, are you a lion? <laughs> you don't use arrows at the dining table. It's in the war. War front. Right. I, I saw this years back. Oh my God. And it broke my heart. This happened in Lagos, I think 2005 or 2004. The, the, there was traffic on Todd Mayland Bridge. If you know Lagos, Lagos is the hub of traffic. Abuja people say they have traffic. See, they learn. Traffic that will clear in 10 minutes. Hmm. All right, so there was this traffic, and there was this guy trying to maneuver his bike, and he scratched a vehicle. And the vehicle belonged to a naval officer. The man had anger issue. Just came out of the vehicle and pointed his gun at the young man and killed him. Straight. Just shot the boy in the head. Dead. The news went around. They arrested the man and all that. But something much more heartbreaking now came out later. That this boy 
is the only son. His father died while the mother was pregnant. The mother died during conception. The only surviving of that lineage is the fellow they have wasted like this. You will think life should be fair. It is not. So there's nothing like with the things I've suffered in this life, the devil himself should know I deserve peace. Oh, news flash. He doesn't care. And what the devil wants is that he wants people to die trying. I beg you in the name of Jesus Christ. Life is warfare. And the earlier we switch, the better. People come to meet me. Say, Apostle, you know, I'm trusting God. This is so and so contract. This is, I say, I can agree with you in prayer, but there's a more excellent way. Get into warfare. That's when you will know that there are forces contending for the same thing you are contending for. Are you following what I'm saying? There are forces. Let me give you another story of somebody who tried to fight in the energy of the flesh. This happened, my dad told me this story. I think this happened in 1970, whatever. There was one of his friends that went to pray somewhere and the prophet told him that your mother-in-law is a witch. I'm no, not mother-in-law. <laughs> your stepmother is a witch. So the guy said, what? Say she's been the one making your life go backward. Blah, blah, blah. The guy got angry. What? I'm going to kill this woman today. Got cutlass. Ran out of the place of prophecy. We say this war no be by cutlass. He went there. Say, I'm going to kill this woman. You're a witch. The woman called neighbors. Help me beg him. I'm not a witch. I love him. This, this, this. They were begging. She's not a witch. After the whole begging. The guy thought that maybe they made a mistake. That night, the woman made swallow and soup and said, please eat your food. This, this, this. That was the last meal he ate with his sense intact. He's been mad since then till now. Except somebody healed him last week. Though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. Tell your neighbor, tune in to the spirit. Tune in, tune in, tune in. That's where it is happening. Tune in. Switch. Look at what the Bible says in verse now, verse 4. It said, For the weapons of our warfare are not what? Carnal. But mighty through God to the pulling down. Of, meaning that we have things to pull down. Every now and then there are things to what? Pull down. They should not be standing, not in your life. There are things to pull down. We pull down strongholds. What is that thing giving the devil an advantage in my life? It's time to pull it down. And meanwhile, strongholds should be pulled down because they've been erected for long. It takes time to build one. Pulling down strongholds. Look at verse 5 now. Casting down what? Imaginations. So these imaginations, <laughs> I had the serious teaching on casting down imaginations. And a heavy high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You see, what was, some, what was mentioned in verse 5? Hmm? If you're going to put it in sum total, those are arrows, but I'm going somewhere. Now turn your Bibles. Ephesians chapter number 6, quickly. Ephesians 6. Let's start reading from verse 10. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Come on, say it. Everybody like thunder. Say amen. amen. Correct, correct. correct. There's a temple we must rise to here. Is that okay? And we will build and rise to that temple. Ephesians 6, 10. If you are there, say amen. amen. Says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Tell your neighbor, be strong in the Lord. Kai, 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 Kai. Ask your neighbor, are you strong? Ask your neighbor, are you strong? Ask your neighbor again, are you strong? Do you know what it means to be strong? To be full of strength. Everything will test you. Life will. People will. People will. I can't remember who shared this story. Just got promoted, promoted at work, was trying to sit down in the new office. I can't remember who shared the story. 
instead of the apostles, and I think maybe him or somebody close to him. And as he was trying to sit down, he just noticed like an invisible force pushed him away from the chair. Then you check what happened. And he looked on the chair and saw champ. That was the intervention of God. Be strong. Be strong. You see, <laughs> when you, nobody wants to fight a strong man. Are you following what I'm saying? When I was in secondary school, at the early phase, when children used to fight and those things, I could count the number of times I ever got into a fight in my life. Because I had sense quite early. And I discovered that anybody could beat me. I just discovered that because they were so strong, so hard. All these boys selling this spare part. And all. It's not like spare part is bad, but I just, I, I size them. So when arguments get to the point that we'll see after class, ah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not me or you. <laughs> we're on. But there was one that I couldn't run from. Because I felt this one that you have done. Ah! I will not take this. So we got into a fight. And I knew that the boy would beat me. And he did. He beat Shege. <laughs> the boy sat on my stomach. Put his two knees on my hand. Or slapping my face. <laughs> Say, mm, slapping my face. So people came and dragged him. I felt cheated that my mate did this. They were asking questions. What happened? I stood. I stood. <laughs> The moment I saw that the boy calmed down and those who said saw that there was peace, I ran towards him and set my teeth on his throat. You can beat me, but this teeth God has given to me. <laughs> See, it became so bad that if anybody is causing trouble and I'm getting close, people will be shouting. Run, run from him. Run from him. Run, run. Don't let him bite you. It was that. I now found out that my teeth was my weapon. That boy. That thing actually severed his jugular vein. Blood was coming out like this. They had to tie him. From that moment, if I'm passing like this and it's come, he will leave. Because he felt he fought a vampire. If you don't find the way of strength, life will beat you blue-black. Just find the way of, and they will cheat you for nothing. I'm not saying start fighting people. You understand what I'm saying? Not forget, we are not fighting the physical. Do you understand what I'm saying? Find the way of strength. Be strong. Nobody wants to fight a strong person. Nobody wants to. Sometimes you, you, you hear stories. Strange stories. And sometimes the devil just wants to check you out to see how strong you are. Somebody has moved to an apartment and you're observing strange... I don't know if you have seen that before. Just know there's strange presence. There's strange presence. What that is telling is that you have not built enough spiritual stamina to resist and send out. When light shines, darkness what? Cannot withstand it. Life is warfare. You know, there was a time years back, four years ago, that I used to, I used to, I was always on the road traveling. Many, in fact, sometimes maybe I only stay in my house twice in a month. From one city to another, from one place to another, I would stack up meetings. And one of those days, you know, usually the only place I get to rest then was in the car. But when I'm on flight, that's the only place I get to rest, you know. And I, I was in the very cool sleeping. Then I saw a vision. And I saw a strange spirit trying to charge out at us, but could not. Sometimes you, you hear, let me give you another illustration. I think I've shared this story before. Of something that happened somewhere around on those days. Heartbreaking story. Thieves were robbing in a place, and there was this man in his own work, a radio presenter, and just felt the nudge. Just didn't know why. Just felt like going out at that point. And didn't just feel like going out, plug in his earphone. You know that woman just want to drive around wearing earphone and all that. 
No, I think, yeah, we're in earphone. And as he was driving, people were waving, stop, stop, stop. They are rubbing in front. The guy kept driving. He couldn't hear them. And when he passed in front of where the thieves were driving, they saw him and wondered, who, who is this guy? And they shot him in the head. And he died. That thought that said, go out at the point that death was waiting. There must be a counter force of strength that can say stay. That is what it means to be strong. That when, to everything the devil is bringing, there is a resistance in the spirit. Charge your spirit to be able to withstand where the devil is waiting. There are ambush everywhere. Be strong. You can't live by your mental impulse. The energy of the flesh can't win this battle. Be strong in the Lord. And if there's anything the devil is trying to fight my generation on, is in the area of strength. Does he want you to be strong? He wants to put you in a situation where you will not be strong. He wants to get you into things that will take away your strength. Look at what the Bible says in verse 11. Say, put on the whole armor of God. That you may be able to stand against the wiles. The word wiles there is against the craftiness, against the deception, against, against the attempt of the devil to deceive you. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand. Now, these are two different kinds of standing now. First is to stand. The second is to withstand. In the evil day, having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins greet about what the truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. So what this means is that, that you are preaching the gospel is actually warfare too. It's part of the armor of war. Do you know? That if you represent Jesus well, you can't misbehave where you have represented him well. That's the fact. If people know you for the gospel, you will not find it easy to misbehave anywhere. True or not true? That's the truth. That's the truth. So the Bible is, it is part of the armor of our warfare. Now look at what the Bible says in verse 16. It said, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fairy that of the wicked. Now, I, I'd like you to, if you can project different translations on the screen at once. Let me, let me show you a couple of translations so we can, we can see this in a better light. If you are there, say amen. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Look at what the Bible says in Amplified Translation. It said, lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked one. He said, above all, that's this um, contemporary English Bible, carry the shield of faith so you can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. Oh, Lord, I, I, I need to give you two illustrations of what this fairy that means. Um, bam, 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 bam. Okay. Um, okay, Robert, please come. Let me give you an illustration. Huh? I would have asked that. Is there anybody here with sword? But this is not Afghanistan, so... <laughs> I mean, if somebody should start up with sword, we say, okay, special seat, please, so we can be sure. But let me give you... Can I have a drumstick? I like to give an illustration. Don't forget this. Please stand here and face me. Don't forget this. The Bible said, put on your shield of faith with which you can quench the fairy dart of the enemy. Don't look at this illustration. You are going through a season in your life and there are individuals in this season that God has placed the words of liberation on their lips to bring you out of that season and send, set you in your next phase. 
Now you find yourself in the midst of people. They were having a conversation. And this is the conversation. Let's say, for instance, a man of God. And all their conversation is centered around that man of God. And they're saying, do you know that guy? Don't mind him. He teaches nonsense. Heresy. This, this. He teaches that. What is happening at that point is that the devil is using them to launch fairy that. So let me explain. So Pastor, please come. So it looks like, stand here, thank you. It looks like they are, they are stabbing the man of God and saying all sorts of things about him, all sorts of things, and say, don't mind him. He's a motivational speaker. And this fellow is at a phase of life where you need exactly what this man carries. That arrow that is pointed at this man is not pointed at him. It is pointed at you. You can't attack this one because what you are saying can't make him go down or go up. He's there by conviction. It is attacking the one who needs the grace for what this person carries. The grace is still current and everybody will drink from it. The one who will not is this one. So the fairy that looks like it is pointed towards someone but it's pointed towards you. Be careful what you hear. Are you following what I'm saying here? Be careful what you... Please, thank you. Let me take this back. Please sit down. Let me tell you this. I will not say it with all my mouth. I'm just going to cut it a bit because it is sensitive. One of the things I spent time doing in Nigeria is to study demography and demographies and then check peculiarities, different... All right? I just have my reason for doing that. And I observed that the generation that seemed to be attacked the most were those... Hmm, should I say this? People are not... Should I beg you not be funny? I saw that a generation suffered more casualty when it comes to warfare in Nigeria. Go and check what I want to tell you. Those born between mid-60s and early 70s. I saw that even in the body of Christ, there are very few in that generation standing. The gap. Are you following what I'm saying? What happened? I started studying and I checked that who were those that God raised for this generation? All right. The men of God that God raised. The devil was able to get at that generation because he gave them a tag for those that God raised. Don't mind them. They are prosperity preachers. So you have the highest rate of people who are poor in that generation. Those who died young in that generation. Go and check what I'm telling you. Because what the devil wants to do is that when God is coming to serve something, let him change the filter. So you will not be able to perceive it well. That is him launching an arrow at your heart. Let me tell you something. One day I went online. And somebody said, Ah, tell me Lazarus. He's a motivational speaker. I laughed. But I took that statement to the place of prayer. I silenced this statement. You will not cut a generation off because of your opinion. That statement will not go over the roof. It is warfare. Before you know it, all that God wants to do, God can't do it again. When people are advancing to war, what do you do? You shoot arrows at a distance. You don't need proximity to the devil to be launched at. Arrows are shot and they are shot in their numbers. So what the Bible is saying is you need faith up always because everywhere you turn, arrows are flying. Somebody is saying something against what God has said in your heart. Somebody on the news is saying something that will be a stronghold and attack you someday. And guess what? I, I, I did some research about hunting and I saw that sometimes even when they launch arrows, at animals, they can still run certain kilometers, but they will die because they will bleed out. Some people are still standing, but they are bleeding out from the arrows of yesterday. Somebody has said something that has made cancer a possibility somewhere in their heart because they've seen so many news about it. 
Somebody has said something that has made dying doing childbirth a possibility in their heart because they have seen so many news about it. What is the thing you are bleeding from or you have not fallen down as a result of it? But you are bleeding. And the devil knows with, with what he has done, okay, let's time this person three years, he will fall down. Put up your shield of faith! There are arrows everywhere. Psalms 91, please. Are you going to pray this morning? Oh, look at only people are talking. Abuja, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Are you going to pray this morning? Look at it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let's start from verse 12. Psalms 91, let's start from verse 12. Psalms 91, let's start from verse 12. Say, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from noisome pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Meaning that you must know truth. The truth of the Lord will be your shield. Amen. Listen, listen. There is a fact about Abuja right now that there is insecurity. That's the fact. Media fact. But the truth is, my going out and coming in are in his hands. Is that okay now? There can be a medical fact that doctors are seeing this, you have to go for certain scan. But the truth is, by his stripes, I have been healed. You must know how to place truth over fact. Because listen, you'll be defeated in the realm of fact. If you live by fact, you'll be defeated again and again. So you must know something that counters every arrow that is coming. What do you know that guarantees length of days? Length of, are you seeing that if you don't know anything that guarantees length of days, you have missed the season? And it's not too late to know it. It is not with long life. He will satisfy. You know satisfaction is that I am not done till I say I'm done. You know, Sometimes my heart, uh, well, well, probably my own upbringing as a Christian. Sometimes I, I see believers say things like, you know, I'm ready to die even now, this, that. That if I die now, I know. I'm like, see, shut up. Don't say that. Don't say that. Don't talk like that. What you are saying is that, devil, don't make the probability. My, myself, I'm signing up for it. We say things on that passion that is not our covenant inheritance. There was, there, was, there was something in Nigeria years back, a Bacha regime. A man of God was preaching, preaching about against the government, the oppressive government, blah, blah, blah. This, this, this. We are going to stand up for this nation. I'm ready to die for this country. He said that under the anointing. They killed him that same week. They killed him that same week. Arrows are flying everywhere. Psalms 91, are we there? Are we still reading? He said, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall you trust. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrows that fly by day, broad daylight. Broad daylight, arrows everywhere. People saying things that will attack the seed of God's word in your heart. Don't be afraid. You know, I want to erase Christians who can win with the word. With the word. Who can stand. This is what the Bible says. This is it. I insist. If God says it, he means it. You must hold truth at a more with more resoluteness than the attacks coming. Because there are arrows flying everywhere. Look how the Bible says in the book of Psalms, chapter number 11, verse 2. Psalms 11, verse 2. Psalms 11, verse 2. Look at it. Oh, God. Let's start from verse 1 so we can have a good understanding of that text. It said, in, thee, in the Lord put I my trust. How shall ye say to my soul, Flee as a bed to your mountain. Why will you scare me? I will not be afraid. No, some people are afraid of being great. Maybe if God starts lifting you now, maybe that's a sign that you die early. You have spent all the things you spend in the future now. 
Where did you get that thought from? It's an arrow. You took it years back. And by yourself, you keep shifting the seasons of God in your life. That God, not yet time, so I will live long. Who said it is this or that? You can have all that pertains to life and godliness. That's our covenant inheritance in God. Say, I have all! I have all! You know, let me tell you something because let me read verse 2. Then what we're going to do now is I'm going to give us two minutes. That two minutes, we're going to begin to detach arrows we have been running with. One of the ways you know area and arrow has entered is there are the areas of your fears. Is that okay now? And how do we, the Bible says that, all right, with your shield of faith, we quench the fairy that. How does that work? Does it mean we'll start doing like this? No. By speaking. The word from your mouth is breaking arrows, breaking them, breaking them, breaking them, breaking them. We speak faith. It can't be your temperament to be quiet when you should talk. Fight when you should fight. I say, I'm just a gentle person. Life is not fair. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, Are you with me? Yes, you look at your children. You are not stubborn. No, you are not a deviant. You are releasing forth words. Look at what the Bible says in verse 2. It says, For lo, the wicked bend their bow and make ready their arrow upon the string that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. Let me explain what this means. Please let me have you. Nakali and Pastor, please come. Look at this. Stand here. Face him. You stand here. Oh God. This guy thinks, this guy thinks this guy is attacking him. Say, when if I go to work, just talk me down. Talk me down. The Bible is saying, the wicked bend their bows at the upright in heart that they may privately shoot. You are seeing him, but the real person is behind. He wants to stay behind many people to hurt you. Behind boss, take away your confidence. Behind the person you meet in a vehicle, talk at you in a way that you lose your joy. He's standing behind them that he may privately shoot Whoever you think is holding it is not the person holding it. There is an enemy behind. And people talk. You look at them. This is not your word. This is not you. The devil wants to get at me. This is not you. You release words. What they have said is not true. It is not true. It is not true. Hallelujah. Can I give us two minutes to get up? And release words. Come on, break the bows. Break the bows. Speak faith. Amen. Amen. Don't do church. Do military. Is that okay? Don't do. Mm, 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 mm. Even if today is your first time, mm, don't do church. Do military. Lift your voice loud and clear. Release the word. Release the word. Release the word. Release the word. Oh, Jesus. Release the word. Sapande Kabaya Selemakai de Motaka Speak words, speak faith, release life, release life. This is my experience in life. Release the word, release faith, release life. Jesus, mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Say it loud and clear. I speak life. I speak life. Amen.
man. Can we say it again? I speak life. Shaka Friday, shaving a mightish to finish. Amen. Please be seated for a while. Be seated for a while. Let me. Let me. Our story in the city of Abuja is similar to the story of Jacob, who said, By my rod I have passed through Jordan, but now the Lord has made me two bands. You will remember how that recently God sent us to Abuja in what I will call the most humble movement. We came practically trusting God for what to do next and how he's going to help us with the words of prophecies he has given to us about the city and the army's raising. And guess what? God is doing just that. Recently, we have been seeing the move of God in the most unbelievable way possible, with his word reaching the unreached, converting sinners to saints, bringing people who have lost hope in church. And now this has necessitated the need for expansion so that we do not fall out of what God is doing. Where we are currently is stringent for us with rules that will limit what God is doing amongst us. The gospel is free, but the propagation requires a lot of funding. We want our friends, partners, and everyone connected to our ministry to join us as we undertake this project together. We have the urgent need to expand, and we believe that this is the Kairos moment for us to do that. We are importing our own tent all the way from China and getting everything needed to fill that space and have a conducive place where we can have our apostolic work beyond what we are having now at the moment. The structure you are seeing on your screen is exactly what we are working at at the moment. Believe you me when we say that people who are blessed can be blessed much more when we have our own place. We want you to join us as we undertake this project. We need your support. We are counting on you and your generosity. We are working towards a project of 180 million naira in this season. You have the account details on the screen. Use the account details as God has laid in your heart. God bless you so much. We love you from all of us at Spelled Light Church. Thank you for always. Time Army. And this is the mandate that he has given to us. Truly the harvest is plenteous but we need you on board as a laborer. This is a call to partner with what God is doing in this great house. To become a monthly partner with us at Sphere of Light Church and Femme Lazarus Apostolic Ministries Ecumenical, can you reach us via the number plus 234-903-095-9735. To give an offering or to sow a seed, can you make use of these account details being displayed? The gospel of Jesus is spreading. Thank you for being a part of it. Let me ask you a question. Where did you pick that fear from? That your life may end at any time. Where did you pick it from? Maybe there's a sickness that is flowing in the bloodline. Mommy had the sickness. Grandma had it. Another auntie had it. You are different. The blood of Christ is more definite than the blood of Adam. There is a blood that speaks better things. You are, you are not a victim of anything flowing in the bloodline that it is flowing doesn't mean you must partake you can say i refuse you can i refuse this i'm not a part of this say there's a pattern of diabetes in the family not mine if any man be in christ he's a new creature all things are passed away behold for all things will be new you must be old we behold like a in a mirror the glory of the Lord. We are changed to the same image. Praise God. This is the life we live. We are speaking believers. We speak. Anybody who is not speaking is going to be a casualty. Every day releasing words. Somebody say, you know you can't do this. Say, no, I can't do all things. True Christ. That's fantastic. Sometimes the arrow comes from, let's assume, let's assume, let's assume. Even in the realm of assumption, this is not my inheritance. Say, you are taking everything too serious. Life is. I am serious. Life is. And let's, let's assume, let's assume any of your child just died. Oh boy, stop that. Even in the realm of assumption. Hey, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and they are safe.
Even in the realm of assumption, I won't take an arrow. No way. As long as it is a word, there is no joke. There is no joke. There is no joke. You just notice certain fears start coming in your heart. Where are you coming from? I pull you down. And sometimes the source is in the dream. You have fasted and prayed only for you to see something strange happening in the dream. The devil has seen that you believe everything you see in dreams. And that's the source where he wants to launch at your heart. You get up from the dream. I said, there's something that is more real than dreams. Even the sure word. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Hey! Please be seated. I won't spend my days in the hospital. Is anyone saying it? I won't spend my days in the hospital. I won't be bedridden. I live in strength. I fulfill my purpose in the land of the living. Nothing will cut me off. No way. No way. No way. When we are speaking like this, it's a warfare. Say, eh, eh, there are no arrows. Okay, the ones that we fly tomorrow, let's release shields of faith ahead. Hey, man. Amen. Somebody says, you know, this Nigeria, all of us, we are struggling. Say, not me and you. Say, struggle your struggle. Not me and you. Yeah. Hallelujah! He says, don't mind those Christians. Just keep talking. Just keep talking. Just, this is how we win. Yes, this is how we win. Yes, this is how we win. Yes, the woman with this your blood said, 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 yeah. if I can touch him. She said, she said, that's how she could receive healing without the permission of Jesus. Jesus, yes, who took it? That is how virtue live. You can take it. <laughs> you can take it. Though. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. She said to herself, if I can. And when she did, straight away, the fountain of the blood dried. Straight away. She said, what are you saying? What, are you, what, what do you spend your day saying? What, 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 what are the kind of words you are speaking? I'm asking, what are you saying? What, what have you said about tomorrow that can make tomorrow so definite? What have you said? What have you sent ahead? You just live every day as they come? Not sending words ahead? Just waiting for, we don't know what can happen tomorrow. You know, sometimes we say we live long. And... What are you talking about? Say, only God knows tomorrow. These things are they freely revealed to us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, I don't know. I don't know what this life holds. Uh, this, 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 this. We, we may. There's this song. Uh, this is song. You know what I say? Bizarre. What's the arena ahead? Right? And more like, more like, you know, they, they really put it, like only destiny knows tomorrow. Maybe I'll be wealthy tomorrow. Only. The things the Bible said concerning you, they are not for your past. They are for your today and tomorrow. Yes, Taking care of everything. Look at what happened in 1 Samuel 17. First Samuel 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David was standing in a crucial moment in destiny. Let me tell you this. You can be exactly where God wants you to be, doing exactly what God wants you to do, but there are wrong people. Listen, anybody who is not walking in faith will be the consistent source of the arrows. They will shut you down. And that's why bad couples never grow and leave your spouse behind. Because an Abraham can hear God says that I will give you seed as much as the stars of heaven. A Sarah that did hear to say, go to my maid. One speaking from the mountain, the other from the valley. There are valley Christians, there are mountain Christians. And they speak different things. And sometimes they are the ones around us. Speaking fear. Speaking different forms of intimidation. 
Probably have no business with the things you are afraid of now. Except that somebody told you that you know you may not be happy. That's true. Sometimes you can be married and every time you have a challenge, you remember what one of your friends said. And that person wants me not to marry her. Not to marry. You'll be running with it. Discard it now. By telling yourself, I married right. David was inquiring. What will be done for the person that kills this uncircumcised Philistine? He said, eh, this, this is what will be done. The elder brother, Eliab, the one that God said in the previous chapter that I've rejected him. We are seeing part of the reason. His lifestyle and the lifestyle of David is world apart. Sometimes the people we call arrogant, we call them arrogant because we can't comprehend their faith life. Yeah, you are too proud. Look at you're always saying big, big things. Who tied your own mouth? Is this your own big things? Who told you to say small things? Somebody just got up and said, you know what? I'm going to enter full bliss. Just, just, say, you two talk. You, you every time. Talk, 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 talk. This guy is saying what he wants to see. Say your own or keep quiet. I know what I've learned, what I've observed. That even in ritual, no, they put anybody for public. Oh, God. The ancestors are not that sophisticated. <laughs> they, are not, they are not that sophisticated. People will go and cut people's heads. They are still not the richest in their village. But when God gives, He freely gives, lavishly. Hallelujah. Maybe somebody is about to start praying. Then somebody just spoke. Everything is not prayer. That's an arrow. Say, maybe it's true. Maybe I should not even pray. All these church, church things said. Somebody shut it down. Eliab was going to shut down destiny. Can you give me that verse? He said to him, ah, look at, look at. He combined strange stuff there. First Samuel chapter number 17. Okay? Let me go to verse 28. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why comest thou, Tita? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride. That's accusation. That, see, you have a track record of being proud. And the naughtiness of your heart. For you have come down that you might see the battle. Abi? And David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him. See, you must not have to turn from people who don't understand. Yes, Brother, you finish talking? Thank you. We are not going to talk again. Yes, sir. When we were coming to Abuja, God said, Go to Abuja. I said, okay. Abuja is one place I've never accepted the invite to come and preach except for one person. Abuja. Okay. I thought God would say Lagos. That's mean. So good to see you, Pastor. I thought God would say Lagos. Say Abuja. So I called somebody. They say, ah, Abuja. Ministry is difficult here. Everything is. I told my wife, that is the last time. <laughs> last time. Ever, ever. And that, that was the last time I ever spoke with the person about anything in church. Any other thing, the one the level can carry. Oh, boy, I'm fine. But this one, no way. What do you think will be David's reaction after killing Goliath and meeting Eliab again? Is this now my pride or destiny? Run from those who call destiny your arrogance. They don't know you. And many of them are quick to label you. I see people post my picture. No, people don't know I used to see anything. I used to see. They post my picture online. I say, Apostle of Wisdom, thank you for the compliment, but I am more. Yes, sir. It sounds nice. Yes, I am more. Yes, That's it. Because they will peg you around a definition. 
and they will expect you to function within their box. If you accept it, a generation will only accept you in that box. Break the box. It doesn't make any sense. Just say, um, Mr. Muzako, a worshipper. He's not a worshipper. This man is more than a worshipper. Who knows? Maybe tomorrow night he's pastor in church. I know to say if you escape him. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? They just peg you with their words. It's an arrow. Don't take their definitions. Who gave you the name you gave yourself? And that was why when God was calling Adam and Eve, God knew they had sinned. But he didn't expect them to be hiding. Adam! Where thou? Say, Lord, I, I eat myself for I'm naked. Who shot the arrow? Who told you that you are naked? He didn't say, what did you do? You believed something. Sin is not the end. Sin leads men to condemnation. So, when people fall into a sin, then the devil can now say, on the basis of this, now you should also believe this. Who told you? He said, eh, this, 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 the, the serpent, the woman that you gave me, blah, blah, blah. Ah. Who told you what you believe? That some things will take five years, will take four years, will take ten years. Who told you? Who gave you the numbers? All the things you have put for now and for future, who gave you the statistics? It's time to see them and pull them down with the word of God. Everything we say are for today can be for tomorrow. The ones that are for tomorrow can be for today. You stay with God to know when seasons are changing. Sometimes, you know, one time I was supposed to fly. They, they, they reach out. This Nigerian flight, they reach out. Say, so, sorry, your flight has been postponed from, I think, um, 1.30 p.m. Now for, I think, 3.30. I mailed the airline. What nonsense is this? I actually typed, what nonsense is this? What is your problem? Every time you keep this, 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 this in less than five minutes, somebody came to see me. This, this, this. Say, okay, the girl's called. Now, we are flying now. Okay. What about those who left? That was how we flew. So, I learned something. At least protest. Mm. No, no, just take everything. Speak, 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 speak. Do you understand? At least do what? If I should show you the mail I sent that day, you think it was one governor? That was ah, me. I know how to defend myself in this life. One time I was serving, took a bus. It's years ago. So I said, yeah, it's years ago. All these blogs, be careful. Yes, many years don't pass. The man dropped me. I said, I gave him 500. And I said, what nonsense? No change. You no, know, that place, they used to shout a lot. I won't mention the place. Shout. So I told the man, you don't shout at me. I now told him something you about. The man said, who are you? So I said, because you saw me in a cab. So I told him, you remember, I said, and he told Juni, Lole, Juni, no. That is the one who is bigger than you can throw you away. People say, hey, hey you don't know his father. Oh. You better leave him. <laughs> oh boy, top boy, I don't get my account. I just spoke to the Speak. Check. When you come around people, you know they are faith life by hearing what they say. Faith is not just what you say in prayer. It is more powerful when you are saying it randomly. It is the random things that will show your experience when you are driving, when you are talking with friends. What are the things you take and the things you can't take? And I've noticed this thing about life. Anything you refuse to take, nobody can force you. I can't be sick. Check it. Sickness can't be forced on you. Hallelujah! David would never have killed Goliath. If he accepted, he was arrogant. Sometimes there are some spiritual people who are the Eliabs. Can be a meeting and they will shut down every direction God is leading you. And that's it. And they will still be first to insult you for not becoming that thing. Hallelujah. Can I give us a few minutes more to pray? Can we, can we walk around? We are starting a new week, right? 
Yes. Shut down arrows. Replace them with the word. Speak the things you must see. Come on, go ahead. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. See, Lord and Claire, this is how we win. Say it again, this is how we win. This is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Even our faith. You know, I want a time to come that everybody will know that when you meet a Sphere of Life church member, they are speaking Christian. From day one in that office, say, oh God, <laughs> the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwells therein. I have come here in the name of the Lord. Anywhere the sole of my feet steps, I take the land. You know, let me, so let me give you a gist, right? You know, I just kept saying, I'm not sure we're going to lease properties in this Abuja. Guys, we can always get more. Anybody I mean, know I'm Oliver Twist, we will get more. We'll get something better. We'll get something better. Before I left for Benin, we went to inspect a property. I tried purchase an hectare. I tried purchase. No stress. Uh, FCD, we do this. Somebody came from there. I don't even know if the man is around. As he came, say, Oh, you are the man I've been hearing. Oh, I'm here. Anything you want me to do. Cause yeah. They know they pay for him. Speak the word. It's free. It's free. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. Hallelujah. I decree if there's anyone here whose life is under attack because of spoken words and arrows launched out, you are set free now. Amen. You are set free now. Amen. You walk in freedom Amen. and in dominion. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have you been blessed this morning? Yeah. Let's give Jesus a big hand. Oh, thank you, Lord. Our story in the city of Abuja is similar to the story of Jacob, who said, By my rod I have passed through Jordan, but now the Lord has made me two bands. You will remember how that recently God sent us to Abuja in what I will call the most humble movement. We came practically trusting God for what to do next and how he's going to help us with the words of prophecies he has given to us about the city and the army's raising. And guess what? God is doing just that. Recently, we have been seeing the move of God in the most unbelievable way possible, with his word reaching the unreached, converting sinners to saints, bringing people who have lost hope in church. And now this has necessitated the need for expansion so that we do not fall out of what God is doing. Where we are currently is stringent for us with rules that will limit what God is doing amongst us. The gospel is free, but the propagation requires a lot of funding. We want our friends, partners, and everyone connected to our ministry to join us as we undertake this project together. We have the urgent need to expand, and we believe that this is the Kairos moment for us to do that. We are importing our own tent all the way from China and getting everything needed to fill that space and have a conducive place where we can have our apostolic work beyond what we are having now at the moment. The structure you are seeing on your screen is exactly what we are working at at the moment. Believe you me when we say that people who are blessed can be blessed much more when we have our own place. We want you to join us as we undertake this project. We need your support. We are counting on you and your generosity. We are working towards a project of 180 million naira in this season. You have the account details on the screen. Use the account details as God has laid in your heart. God bless you so much. We love you from all of us at Spelled Light Church. Thank you for always. Time Army.
And this is the mandate that he has given to us. Truly the harvest is plenteous, but we need you on board as a laborer. This is a call to partner with what God is doing in this great house. To become a monthly partner with us at Sphere of Light Church and Femme Lazarus Apostolic Ministries Ecumenical, can you reach us via the number plus 234-903-095-9735. To give an offering or to sow a seed, kindly make use of these account details being displayed. The gospel of Jesus is spreading. Thank you for being a part of it.